Fair enough. So uh, from here, I move on further to the next part of uh, the presentation, which talks about exploring, cleaning, presenting, and summarizing your data. Looks complicated, but it will become easier. Why is it necessary to summarize data? Why do I want to summarize my data? It helps me gain familiarity with my data. It's the only way that you will be looking for unusually high or low values to see if you've made a mistake in entering the data. You would be checking the assumptions which are required for doing statistical tests at this stage. So as you remember, you have qualitative data, which could be nominal or ordered, and you have quantitative data, which could be continuous or discrete. This is what we just covered. And this was also the first slide. So uh, Rosie, you had asked me uh, for sharing the first slide. So practically this in itself was the first slide and we will see the slide all over again, talking about the different types of variables. Now, the different ways to summarize qualitative and quantitative data, one way is to do frequency tables. So frequency tables are a good way to summarize either quantitative or qualitative data both. Bar graphs and pie charts are also a good way to summarize quantitative data. So we've got these interchanged. So I, this should be here. So bar charts and pie graphs or pie charts are looking at qualitative data. For example, if you wanted to show what is the distribution of sex, you would easily make a pie chart which will show 25% or 30% or 40% of individuals are males and the rest of them were females. And similarly, this box represents quantitative data. So box plots or histograms are a good way of looking at quantitative data. So we will look at it a little more in a little bit in next five minutes. Let's go ahead from here. But do remember that tables can be used to represent or summarize both quantitative and qualitative data, whereas bar and pie charts are a good way to summarize qualitative data and box plots and histograms are a good way to summarize quantitative data. So that's exactly what we talked in the last one. It's a different way of presentation. Tables are a good way for categorical or nominal qualitative data, whereas uh, graphs are a good way of summarizing depending upon the type of graph we use. Now here I'm going to break for a practical demonstration. I am going to get out of my slides mode. Uh, let me escape. Uh, Yes. So with this, I go on to a software. I'm going to introduce this um, software to you. You uh, don't need to learn the software. My only purpose of demonstrating to you was to give you an idea how this is done. And there is nothing like rocket science in this. And the statisticians which tell you that it is so difficult to do it are... Uh, wanting to keep their bread and butter alive. So this is Stata, a very old version of Stata, which I'm using. Stata is a software that we use to do uh, statistical tests and commands. Let me uh, pull in some data into Stata. And with this, now I have populated my window. If you will see, I have got now some data into my Stata file. So you will be able to see that this black portion in the center of the screen is where the results will appear. This is where I will type some commands and the results will then appear. So if you remember, we just talked about histograms, box plots, and we also talked about bar graphs and pie charts. So let's see how it is done. So if you remember the commands, that's we, that is where we put and type the commands. But most of us clinicians don't remember the commands of the software language. So there is a better interface. We go into the graphs, we just make a pie chart, 
and let's say I want to see the pie chart of sex. And that's it. I just submit. So this data will throw back at me a pie chart. That's simple enough. And I copy and paste it into wherever I want to report it. So that's, that's as simple as it is. If I want to make another kind of graph, let's say I want to do a histogram. I want to see how the data of my age looks like. So I just go in, I type into the uh, dialog box that I want to see the histogram of age, hit on submit, and lo and behold, I get the histogram of age. In this particular uh, one, you might see that it is largely, not, not very clearly, but otherwise, if you are aware of a normal distribution, looks like it's a normally distributed graph. So uh, that's how we make histograms, we make pie charts, and we can do a lot of other things in, in Stata when we work on it. Getting back to what we were talking about, that's all that the uh, demonstration that I wanted to do at this point. Now let's try and see more on how we summarize quantitative data. So when we are summarizing quantitative data, there are two important elements in this data set. One is the location. And the second thing that we want to summarize it with is variability. So location is nothing but the measure of where the data is centered. And as you are all maybe familiar already with, is those three terms that we often talk about, mean, median, and mode. So those are the ways to uh, talk about locating or uh, talking of summarizing data when it's quantitative continuous data. So mean, median, and mode. Mean, obviously all of you know, so I'm not going to go and teach again how to calculate the mean. And in any case, you don't need to do it. The software will do it for you. We will see how it does it in the demo demonstration part. And so in any case, I'm not going to tell you the formula and the way it is done. I'm not going to talk to you about how median is found. The software will do it for you. I have never seen a paper which reports mode, so I'm not even going to talk about it. We are rarely, if ever, going to use modes in our presentations or in, or in our papers. But the important thing that I want you to remember here is that when we use mean, we always report along with it the standard deviation. And when we report median, we report the interquartile range. I will explain what these terms are, but just remember that when you are talking about mean, you want to report the standard deviation. And when you want to report the median, you report the interquartile range. So like we said, mean is nothing but the average. Median is the centermost value. You put them all in ascending order and whatever comes in the center becomes the median. The software will do it for you. You never will have to do it by hand. What is, so location told us where the data is centered. You, want, you may want to know what is the mean age. You want to know what is the median age. But you also want to understand the data by seeing how much is the variability. Now for variability, obviously there is a range. Range is just the minimum and the maximum value. The difference between the two will give you the range. And then there is something which is called the interquartile range. So you remember for doing the median, we put the data in an ascending order from the lowest value to the highest value. And when we get the 25th percent of the value, and then we take the 75th percent of the value, so whichever value appears at the 25th percentile of data values and the 75th percentile will formulate what we have the interquartile range. So between the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile is the interquartile range. Again, something that you do not need to do, the software will do it for you. Standard deviation gives you uh, how the mean, how each value is, how far each value of an observation is away from the mean. So when you've got an average, it will tell you how far away each value is from the average. So if a group of data has 
uh, mean age of all pregnant mothers at 29. And you have a particular woman with an age of 27. So standard deviation will just give you an uh, estimate of how far each value is from the mean of the data. Three other terms, variance, coefficient of variation, and reference range. Not very useful, but you may get confused when you see them. That's why I brought them here. Variance will come more when you talk about ANOVA. That's another uh, statistical test that we use. But I will not talk about ANOVA or variance during this particular session. It's just analysis of variance, where you are trying to determine how much variation is there within the group and between the different groups that you are studying, how much variability or how much variance is there. Moving ahead, forward from here. So there are uh, different distributions of data. And so far, you must have heard a lot about a normal distribution. So here, I would just want to tell you, I will not tell you a lot about normal distribution. That is not for you to know. But just that a normal distribution, when we need to check in our data whether it's normally distributed or not, even statisticians just make a histogram and visually see that is it approximately looking like this? If it's approximately looking like this, then it is normal. If it's not approximately looking like this, then it's not normal. There are several fancy tests to look for normality of data, but nobody hardly ever uses them. The best way to do it, make your histogram, see how the histogram is looking like, and say whether it's normal or not normally distributed. Now, anybody would be able to tell me, what is this? Is it normal? Obviously, there is the peak here and then a tail here. So this tail is more to the right. So this is obviously a skewed data, which is called a right skew because there is a long tail on the right. And similarly, this other graph here shows a, a left skewed data. These are not normal. This is rightly skewed, and this data is left skewed because the tail is lying to the left. So depending upon whether the tail is to the right or the tail is to the left, we call it right skewed or left skewed. When the data is right skewed, we have some transformations that we can do on the data. We can take square roots of all the um, uh, observations, we could take log of all the observations, we could take inverse of all the observations. I don't want you to remember this. I just want you to know that when the data is skewed, you can transform the data by either applying square root or log or inverse. And then you take the mean of the transformed data, but please do remember that then you have to back transform to the original scale. So you take the log, then you take the mean of the log, and then you transfer or transform back the mean with an anti-log if you have used the log transformation. Transformations in the left skewed data are a little more complicated. I have put it there on slide for completeness, but definitely we will not be talking about these here. But the concept that I do want to bring to you is that when you have a normal data and you take a mean, what you have got is the arithmetic mean. Please remember that is referred to as the arithmetic mean. When you take a transformation, then take a mean and then back transform it, then what you get is a geometric mean. So if while reading any paper, you find that somebody has used the term geometric mean, that means they first transform their data and then they back transform their data to obtain the geometric mean and it is not the arithmetic mean. I hope you will not get confused now after listening to the terms like arithmetic mean or a geometric mean. Let's, let's go and do a little more dem demonstration on this. And uh, let's go back to our Stata window and see uh, how the mean works. 
This was what we had done last time in the histogram. I'll close all these windows. Let's say if I wanted to see the mean of the variable age. So now I do sum age. That's it. This data will give me that age has got 70 observations in my data. The mean of my age is 52.2 years and the standard deviation is 17.35. It also tells me that the minimum observation is 19 and the highest observation is 85 years. So that's, that's all I needed to do was tell Stata to do summary of age and it will summarize age for me. Now, we wanted all the details also. We wanted to see what is the interquartile range, what is the median. So I just need to add another D to that command. If I don't remember the commands, I go to the statistics window and I ask it to give me the summary tables and summary statistics. And I choose from there if I don't remember this. And here is the means and I ask it to do it that way. But if I remember the commands, that's how it is. And when I do this, now I already have, and the software puts back to me that the median is here, the 50th percentile, 52.5. The interquartile range is from 39 to 67. And the mean is this, standard deviation is this, variance is this. So we've got all the parameters that I needed right here at the click of a command. And that's all is needed just to calculate most, most of our uh, data that we do is talking about means, standard deviations, interquartile ranges, and medians.